Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to take a look at how to create a test using the Aurelia.cloud platform in your browser. So let's jump over and get started. Okay, so here we are in the admin panel, which is where you end up after you log in, and we are going to click on tests. The first thing you want to know is that the black panel or dark blue panel on the left is where all of your groups are and then your content is going to go over on the right in that white space. So to start, we're going to create a test from scratch today. So let's hit the plus button in the upper right of the black panel and we're going to do an Aurelia test. Okay, so first things first, let's give it a name. Um, let's call this final exam. A. Maybe we'll do a couple versions of it. And then I'm going to give that a description. Just final exam, it's fine, whatever you want. And then the group. The group is like your, your little storage folders for everything. It's a great way to organize your materials. And I'm actually going to add it to this Music 101 final exam group. Okay, and it will pop in there after we save everything. Okay, and I want to make it available on the browser for students. If I wanted to force them to go to the desktop um, software, I would select desktop, but we want them to do this on the browser, so I'll leave that selected. You can give them one attempt. Let's, let's say that we're going to make this a high stakes exam, so I'm going to have all the settings be like as they would be for a final exam. So I'm going to leave it at one attempt, and I'm going to set up the time limit when we come back. But first, let's do entries. So. On the left, you have the drop down menu for entries, but we want to go over to the right and click on the entries button. Okay, good. So now we're going to add some stuff. This plus button up here, we're going to click that, and first we're going to do some instructions. So let's just give it a title. Instructions and Complete the exam, you will have a one hour time limit. There you go. Okay, that's it. And then we're going to hit save. So this panel also gives you a good clue about what the students are going to see. So if it says instructions, that's what the students will see when they're taking the exam. Um, I find that that's a really helpful way to just have students know where they're going with things. So giving things a nice clear title is, is helpful for the students. Let's go ahead and add some content. So I'm going to hit the plus button again, and I could do more text, which we already did that, or a level drill or a library drill. The level drills draw from the syllabus. So I want to do one of those because I'm going to do some interval recognition. And um, basically, if you're not familiar with it, the syllabus is a collection of generated drills or curated collections of questions that we've put together for you to use, or you can even put together your own. Um, but here we're going to do the interval recognition. So first, before I do anything, I'm actually going to select the type of questions I want asked. So I'm going to pull from, I'm going to hit syllab under syllabus, hit the drop down, and hit the theory and R1 syllabus. Okay, that's going to be what uh, we've put together for basically a theory one class at most colleges. It's a good collection and topic i'm going to select the interval recognition topic and then i am going to under level choose the chromatic level and that's going to give us all of the intervals within the scale ascending descending um, and played melodically okay you can always find the description there if you're not sure what you want to pick okay and then i'm going to choose the number of plays. If I want to change that, I can highlight and type a new, or I can use these arrows over on the right to toggle up and down. And I'm going to turn off allow pause because it is a final exam after all, right? Playback, I'm going to leave all of this alone for now. I will explain it a bit later. Okay, so now we want to update a couple things. We want to give it um, maybe a new title. The default title is actually pretty good, so I'm going to leave that as is. And I'm going to change it to three questions, and I'm actually going to make it five marks per question, and that will help balance it out with some stuff I'm going to add in in a minute, and you'll see that when we get there. Okay, so five marks per question, and then marking. Now, these are um, yes or no questions, so there's no partial score, so you can just leave it as round to nearest it 
doesn't have an effect for these types of questions. So hit save in the upper right. And let's add some library questions. So again, plus library drill. These are questions that are going to be pulled directly from the library. You can either do a standalone question or you can put together a question bank. And I'm going to show you both ways of doing it. So library drill. And here's where you really do want to add a new title to give them a clue about what's going on. So this is going to be a melodic dictation. And we're going to leave it at one question and I'm going to bump up the marks per question to 30. So that's going to get give enough room for partial credit for rhythm and notes pitches. OK, it's a good thing to do. And let's add some questions. So library questions over here on the right, you can add and we're gonna search. So it's general um, search parameters. You can use quotes, I find that helpful. Okay, 2,394, <laughs> it's a lot. So let's parse it down. Let's look for one of our new diversity examples. Okay, so quite a few, 90. Um, and let's look for Maria von Paradis. I know that she's got some good stuff in here. So I'll just type in Maria, that works fine. And you can see we, now we have six questions to choose from. The timestamp, those are going to be real recordings or rendered audio. And then the bars will be a MIDI recording. So it's how you tell the difference between it. Okay, and I rather fancy this question. Um, that measures one through four. So I'm actually going to unselect that and show you because once you click on it, it selects it and we're going to click the play to grab a preview of it. Okay, so it's rather nice. You can see the student gets the rhythm. They only have to pick out the pitches. And if you want to figure that into your number of points that you assigned, you can do that. Um, and let's go ahead and go back and we'll leave that selected and click the check mark. Good. Um, no worries about random question order since there's only one question. And let's give them a couple extra plays. And now what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn off start immediately, which you can do for the library questions that will give your students a chance to get in, see what's going on, and then click play to start the question. All right, so under playback options, um, I'm again going to leave everything alone. This is more of a Roboto recording, so there's no need to disable a counter or metronome and the MIDI mixer um, will not come into play here. So that's everything. Let's go ahead and hit save and add one more question. Another library drill. For this one, we're going to do a question bank. So I'll show you how that works. So, and it's going to be a part dictation. Okay, and we're going to do one question to be asked and I want it to match the weighting of the melodic dictation. So I'm gonna give it 30 points and let's hit plus. Okay, now I wanna search for part dictation. I'm gonna put that in quotes. coming up quite a few and let's do something with a secondary dominant five seven of that will be enough and let's say we want it to be like only four chords so I'm going to do two bars okay and that's going to give us all of our shorter examples and I'm just going to pick three in major you I'm not clicking anything <laughs> on the keyboard you just click and it will select and you can preview it if you want. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the check mark. Good, so now what we have is we have a nice little question bank. Three questions, one question to be asked. So each student will get one of these three at random. A couple different options here. If I wanted to give them all of the questions, I could put in three questions to be asked, and it will now give them these three questions in a random order. If I wanted to give them all three questions in the same order, I could uncheck that and then they'll all get the C major and then the D major and then the E major. Okay, but let's go ahead and put it back to one question. Okay, now here's where some of our options come into play. We can again adjust the number of plays, turn off start immediately, and playback options. So now we have multiple voices that the students have to notate. Um, so I'm going to turn the mini mixer on. 
and I'm going to set the minimum volume to say 50%. So this is a percentage, even though there's not the percentage sign. Um, so that means that the students can turn any one voice down to 50% of its original volume. Okay, um, it's a really nice little feature here. So if we want to, we can disable the count in. Um, there's no metronome for this, but you can turn off the count in. And then I'm going to disable the starting pitch. Okay, and I'm going to leave the time limit unlimited. I honestly never set a time limit for those, but you can if you want. All right, so hit save. And let's look at our settings for the test. So we've got all of the entries. You can see this is pretty close to what the students will see while they're taking the test. If you wanna preview how it, the whole thing works, you can click the preview up in the upper right. And let's do some settings. So I'm gonna hit edit. And the first thing I'm going to do is add a time limit. So restricted. And then let's set this to 60 minutes. And let's give them an alert at say five minutes so when they have five minutes left the timer will be highlighted to give them a little warning okay okay so in time slots you're going to go over to the time slots button on the right and hit new and i'm just going to leave it so it's open for the next week you can do anything that you want um, especially if you want those to be completed like during a specific time um, for your class hit confirm save and we'll assign it to a class. Um, I'm going to give it to the MUS 101 class. Results. So now this is a high stakes exam. So let's talk about the how to make it high stakes. Final exam, you don't necessarily, like if they're taking a final exam, they're not going to get feedback after each question. That's more for a learning exercise type of assignment. So I'm going to turn that off. Leave the score while running turned off. Um, I do want to give them the score upon completion to kind of settle their heads. So that's just a report. It doesn't tell them any of the answers, but I definitely want to turn off, allow students to view scores on homepage. Because what that does, it turns off the option so they can go back and look at their entries later. And also, if you're linked up with an LMS system, they could potentially see their work in there. So it removes the ability for students to share answers with their friends. Okay, so let's leave that unchecked. And navigation, um, we are going to show the navigator panel because that does give the students those titles that I showed you on the left. Um, allows students to view entries that, that shows them what's in the test before they start taking it and show entry number. That's just fine. This is all like letting the students become oriented during the test. Okay. If it was only library questions, you could. Uh, have this checked and it would let them kind of work back and forth the way they would if they were taking a paper exam. So if they're more comfortable with part dictation and they want to do that first, they could jump to that last question, answer that, and then go back. Okay. Options. I like to leave both of these checked. Prevent incomplete attempts. So that is if their internet crashes or they get interrupted by emergency and they leave the test, when they come back, they will have to pick it up where they left off. There's not an option for them to kind of start from the beginning again. So that's a great option to prevent all kinds of kerfuffles with students. <laughs> okay. Terminology, there's nothing in here that affects us for this test because it's more of an oral test. But if you're doing a musician test and doing part writing, here's where you could select the different um, part writing rule sets that you want, which you do set those over in the software, but you can select the different ones. Um, and number of answer checks. So again, for a high stakes test, I would have that set at zero so they can't check their answers before they turn it in. Okay, so that's it. Let's go ahead and hit save. And we will look at how we can see the answer. So I have, I just happen to have another version of the final exam that already has entries recorded against it. So students have already taken it. Um, so to see their results, you can do that two ways three ways actually. You can scroll down to the bottom and hit the usage and grades drop down. Um, select, I think prior month, these are a bit older. So you can see these two students, Ms. Barbara Streisand did a attempt on the test and you can see their work by hitting the little eye. And then the other way that you can see their work is go to the admin panel, go to grading, and you can 
go to now these I've already graded and adjusted their grade so I'm going to go to graded but normally you go to automatically graded so graded and click on here and then you can check them this is much if you're familiar with the software it's really the same concept so you're going to check on those and then you can hit review okay so now I can move through the test as they took it if I want to see um, what the correct answer is, what they got wrong, I click on feedback. Okay, so that's where you can review their work and adjust their grades and do all that good stuff that you might need to do for an exam as a teacher. All right, that's it. I hope that that helped you out a little bit. And please, if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. And we'll see you all in the next video. Bye.